This is a quick video explaining when you are taking ultrasonic thickness readings, undercoated or painted surfaces, paint is the most common in everyday use. And um, it shows why when you take a multiple echo technique, read between two echoes instead of to the first back wall like you do maybe more commonly, that you'll factor out the paint or the coating on the metal and read just the metal. It's kind of a really neat trick. I actually published an article about this back in January of 1994 that AST uh, printed in their materials evaluation magazine. Uh, so that was you know more than 26 years ago. But I thought it'd be nice to make it here. It's, everybody kind of knows it now. It wasn't at that time a wi as widely understood. And what you had was people were taking, you know, physically measuring or taking coating gauges, and they were trying to measure the actual, our average coating of thickness, the actual physical dimensions of the paint or coating. And then they were subtracting that from UT readings, the ultrasonic thickness readings that they were receiving from the technicians in the field, and that was not correct. There's several reasons that can't work. Uh, the number one reason is, is one, if the company, if the tech is reading with a multi-echo technique, you're not, you're not, you don't have any coding in that reading anyway. But if say if they were just reading a direct reading and they had paint or coding in, factored in that with that reading, you can't. It's not going to ultrasonically be the correct thickness. Paint or coating is not metal. Let's say steel. Your ultrasound machine is calibrated for the the velocity of ultrasonic waves in that metal. In paint or coating or other coatings, it's going to be a very different velocity. So it'll, you know, if you have five or ten mils of paint, it might look like fifty thousands ultrasonically. So, you know, even if you tried to do that, it's not going to work. You're going to get inaccuracy. But by using a simple multi-echo technique, you just factor out the paint or coating. In this drawing, you know, the blue part on the top is a transducer. The red layer is paint or coating, and then the white is the metal we're traveling through. And you'll see, I have a little black arrow that's going to show like the, the sound traveling through the material. Let's show like when we transmit the, you know, when this is a pulse echo technique. So we're, we're sending out a sound wave. It's going to go through the metal and then bounce back and make a, and we're going to receive it. So there's a receiving part and a, I mean, a pulsing or sending part and a receiving part to the sound. For each signal we're going to get on the machine. Now, I'm going to show it just moving from the transducer this little bit to the interface between the painter coating. And one thing is handy to remember for you to understand this little trick is that at every interface or change between types of materials where there's a change in velocity, there is some of the sound will be transmitted, some of it will be reflected. So at this paint, at this interface between the paint and the steel, some of the sound is going to bounce right back into that toward the transducer. We don't care about it. That's going to be like eight up in the initial pulse. We're not going to really see it. We don't care about it. And it's not useful to us at this point. So then the, some of the sound is going to go through into the metal until it hits the bottom of the, or the far side of the metal or back wall is what we typically call it. Now, Say if that's a pipe with water in it or oil or something, some of the sound's going to go into that. It'll even go into air a little bit, but not much. So <clears throat> at this point, the sound we've sent the sound. It's gone through the paint and through the metal. So at this point, we have the tr the one trip through the steel and one trip through the painting or coating. Now the sound. You know, most of the sound is going to bounce off of the back wall of the metal and start coming back toward us. And it's going to move up to this interface again with the painter coating. And remember, every time it changes through one, through that interface, a different type of material, there's going to be a reflection and a transmission. Some of the sound's going to reflect, some's going to transmit. The sound that's doing that at this point is critical. It happens at the interface of the metal to the paint, not under the transducer. And that's really critical in why we're going to be able to factor out the thickness of the paint. So some of the sound is reflected back, and we'll talk about it in a moment. 
that's going to go on to make our second reflection. We're right now, the sound that we're looking at right now is going to come, go, make it to the transducer and make our first reflection. But this is where the bounce happens. So some of it's going to bounce back and head on to make a second, another trip through the steel. But some of it's going to make it through and come back to the transducer. The steel that's making that reflection, our first back wall reflection, has been through the steel twice. You know, it's been transmitted and received back. And it's been through the paint twice. It's been transmitted through the paint and received out back. Or we could express that as one round trip in steel, one round trip in paint. And if we would look at our A scan display, and look, this is meant for that. This part's meant for somebody that knows a little bit about ultrasound. It's not a tutorial on basic ultrasound. So that sound that we saw that made that, you know, was sent and received through the steel and the paint, one trip, I mean, one round trip each, that's where our one, our first reflection is. Now, the next one's going to be the second reflection, and the key part there was is that the sound that's going to go to make our second back wall reflection bounce back at the interface of the metal to the paint when it was coming off the back wall. So that paint, that trip did not, that sound that's going to go on to make our second back wall in the middle of the first and second back wall reflections, it did not go through the paint again. So now it's going to go down, hit the back wall. Some of it's going to transmit through. Some of it's going to bounce back. Now, some of that sound at this interface is going to bounce back and go to make our third back wall reflection, which we don't care about at this time. But some of it's going to make it through and get to the transducer. This steel that has done this, the sound, I mean, has been through the tr steel four times, essentially. It's been sent and received, and I mean, bounced back and then bounce back down through the steel another time and receive back through the steel another time. It made two full round trips through the steel. But, you know, it only has made that one round trip in the paint. It was sent through the paint at the initial pulse. And then between the first and second signals, it didn't go through the paint. It, was stay, it stayed in the steel. When it came back and made it through for the second signal to get to our transducer again, that was its second trip through the steel, which made a complete, I mean, through the paint, which made a complete round trip. So you see at the first signal, we had one round trip in the paint. In the second signal, we still only have one round trip in paint. So if we want to mathematically express that, since the second signal is two round trips in steel and one round trip in paint, and the first signal was one round trip in steel, and one round, but still just one round trip in paint. We can factor by, you know, me measuring from the first signal to the second signal, we're subtracting the amount of time, you know, one round trip of paint from our signal. And that it leaves us with one round trip in steel, zero round trips in paint. By, so just by reading, instead of reading the time from, from zero, the beginning of our delay to the first signal, that would include paint, and it's going to be wrong because of the velocity differences in steel and paint. But instead of doing that, if we just read between the first signal and the second signal, we have removed from that time of sound path, we have removed the time that it was going through the paint. And so we m magically wind up with the, amount, uh, the accurate reading of the steel, and completely we just made the, the coating basically transparent. So all that is left is one thickness of steel, paint or coating completely factored out. By using the multi-echo technique, we can read the steel thickness only and factor out the paint. If you want to demo this, you could take your ultrasound machine, calibrate it on steel in, in multi-echo mode, and then take one of your step wedges, like a 500,000 wedge, and, if you, and wrap some electrical tape around it. And if you put your transducer down on that electrical tank, you'll still see you read 500. If you would read it in direct mode to the first, in normal mode, where you just read to the first signal, when you would hit on top of the electrical tape, you might read like 550. But in multi-echo mode, you should read just the thickness of the steel. Hey, if you liked the video, I'm making a few of these NDT. I know a lot of people in NDT. Um, it helps if you like and subscribe to get to uh, get me to make some more videos. Okay, thanks.